Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Walk Podcast. If you're new here, my name is Sam. I post all things lifestyle, faith, travel, vlogs. This channel is essentially a video diary of my life. And whenever I have something on my heart that I want to share with you guys or just something fun that I want to share with you guys, then I will post it on here. So if you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe. I have a lot of actually really exciting things that I want to share on this channel coming in the next few months. So if you're here and you are not subscribed, it would mean the world to me if you did. Um, And I hope that you enjoy your time here. Um, This podcast has essentially kind of turned itself into a faith-based podcast where I do talk about other things, but I have just been such on on such a journey in the last year. I've been on a walk, so to speak, um, and I just feel like I'm learning so much that I just have it on my heart to share it, and so that's kind of what this podcast has turned into, um, and so as long as you guys are coming back and watching these episodes, I'm going to continue making them. I... I have really been enjoying it Um, and as much as I'm like speaking to you, I never want you guys to think that I'm preaching just at you where I'm like, I know better and you guys have to follow what I'm doing. That is never my intention at all. I want you guys to know that this is a safe space. I welcome everybody here. This is very, um, you know, whatever I say to you, I'm also preaching to myself because I'm learning as I go. I'm constantly learning new things. And I've learned that I love learning new things. I love seeing my faith grow and the things that I go through to make my faith grow. And it's just really cool. And so um, I have seen through comments and DMs that I get that a lot of you have been going through similar things that I have. And um, I just feel like we're kind of in this together. We're on this walk together. Now you're kind of seeing where I got the name for the podcast. Um, It just kind of makes sense. I really feel like we're on this walk together on this journey together and we're just learning together So that's always that's just my that's my intention with the podcast episode. So Anyway, before we get into the meat and potatoes of what I want to talk about um, I just wanted to do a check-in. I hope you guys are doing well. I am doing okay Um, I'm actually doing something cool that I wanted to share with you guys Um, I've never done this before I am doing a fast with my church If you don't know what a fast is, it essentially represents like an act of submission or like surrender to God and it's meant to have your focus be more on him and kind of growing your faith and seeing your relationship with God grow. And I've always seen people do it and I was always very intimidated by it. I'd never really done it before. Um, And so I'm doing my first one. You can fast really whatever you want. I know people that are fasting um, a certain type of music. Some people are fasting social media. Some people are fasting meals. And so I was going back and forth and I was like, I really want to do this. It was 21 days of prayer and fasting that my church is doing it. So we're doing it as a church body together. And I was like, I really want to do it, but I don't know what to give up. I've never done this before. Like who's to say what's good to give up and what's not, you know, I just, I didn't know. And so I learned that it's essentially supposed to be giving up what your flesh craves, what your body craves. And that way, when you are praying for whatever you're believing for, whether you're asking for direction, um, you have to make a decision, you don't know what to do, you know, whatever, whatever you're praying for, the act of submission and like surrendering whatever you want to God and being like, I'm going to give this up to honor you. It's supposed to make way for that clarity in the decisions that you're asking God to help you make, if that makes any sense. So I was like, okay, what my flesh craves? What do I like to indulge in? That's how it started for me. So for me, I'm giving up um, foods that I like to indulge in. So like chocolate, sweets, anything like processed sugar, refined sugar, artificial sugars. Um, So, you know, like my true fruit, if you know me well, you know, I love my true fruit, my little frozen fruits dipped in chocolate. It's one of my favorite things. That, for example, things like that. Um, I'm also giving up um, cheese. I know that's a weird one, but I love to put cheese on like everything. So no cheese. And I also gave up um, my dating app. Yeah, which to be honest, I wasn't really liking anyway. And I was thinking of getting rid of it anyway. Um, And so I added that in there for like extra measure. Um, And so those are some of the things that I'm giving up. I think with every fast that I do, because now I know a little bit more about it. I know what it is. I know what the purpose of it is, how to do it. 
um, things to accompany it with. So you can't just fast. You have to also spend time now in prayer and in the word and, and all that. So I'm learning more about it. Um, so now every time I do it, like I'll know, like, like next time I think maybe I'll fast like breakfast, you know, I'll fast a meal. I have a friend that the last fast he did, he only had one meal a day for like a month. And then, um, I think like the last day or the last two days, he just had water. Like he didn't eat anything. And honestly, like truth be told, I can't even imagine. Like I feel like I would pass out. I would faint. Um, But the point is, you know, he had to rely on, you know, he would pray and ask for strength to get through it. I'm so not there yet. Not even close. But I think the next one I I will do, um, I'll like fast breakfast. Um, So... That's what I'm doing right now, but I will be honest with you guys, and I'm not just saying this. I'm on day 12 out of 21 days, and already I've learned so much. The things that I have been praying for, the direction that I've been praying for, you know, for my next job, for just things that are going on in my life, I have already learned so much. I feel like so much has been revealed to me already. It's crazy. So it's been it's been really, really cool. Um, so anyway, if you've never fasted before, um, I think it's something to look into. It's cool. It's very new to me, like I said, but I'm, I'm learning and it's been really cool so far and I look forward to the next one I do. And the cool thing is that you can, you can fast something different every time. So it's really cool. So if you have any experiences with fasting, I'd love to hear what you have fasted in the past and and how that worked for you. And if you want to share what was revealed to you through that. I would be very interested to hear uh, about your experience. All right, but let's get into what I actually wanted to talk about in this episode. And it's all about the things that I don't want to do anymore. Things in my life that were once attractive to me, that were desirable to me, that no longer are. And, you know, when I said I went and I looked back on that first episode that I posted 10 months ago, you know, I was really reflecting on like, what has changed in me since then? Because I feel so different, but what exactly like has changed? And I've noticed like as time goes on that, like I said, certain things that I used to love to do have absolutely no hold on me anymore. And I feel like my mind has just completely been renewed. And I feel like it happened first And then as time went on, I understood why. So we're going to unpack that today. And we're going to go through, I have a list of a couple things like specifically that I'm going to talk about that like I used to do that now I don't want to do anymore. Um, But before we get into those things, like I really was sitting down and I was like, why? Why do those things change? How does your mind get renewed to where what was once attractive to you no longer is? And honestly... I'm learning that as you learn more about God and you're more, you're reading the Bible and you're focusing more on your faith and how your faith is growing and your relationship with God, it kind of happens automatically. Like it was, I never had a moment where I sat down and I was like, I'm never going to do this anymore because I'm not allowed to. I'm not going to do this anymore because a Christian shouldn't do that. It wasn't that intentional. It really wasn't. It just happened. And so as your relationship with God grows, or at least I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak for me. I'm not going to speak it over you. I'm going to speak for me. As my relationship with God grew, I wanted to honor him in every aspect of my life. I wanted to make him proud. I wanted to make him happy. I wanted to live a life that was pleasing to him. Because if I had a moment where I was like, if I'm going to sit here and I'm going to say that I'm a Christian, I don't want to be a hypocritical Christian. I don't want to sit here and go to church every Sunday, but then Monday through Saturday, I'm living a completely different life. Because the truth is there's a big difference between being a Christian and going to church and completely submitting your life to God and following him. I learned that. And I was at this one for a long time. I was the first one. Or I was just going to church for years and going through the motions. And I spoke about that in my testimony video a little bit, which was, that was a couple months ago, but I spoke about that a lot in that video. Um, And now I feel like I've kind of transitioned to this side where I'm like, if I'm going to say I'm a Christian, I'm going to do it right. And I remember over the summer, 
I was literally sitting right here on this couch. I was making um, a Bible reading video for my main channel and I believe I was reading the book of Romans. And this, this moment was captured on camera. Um, you can't see it because I hit it really well. But I was reading the book of Romans and it says, you know, you should not do this and you should not do this and you should not do this. And I was like, okay, yeah, I can't, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Cool. And then I got to one part where I read over it and it was like, that shall not do this. And it was something that I liked to do. And I was like, yeah. And I just kind of skimmed over it. And I was like, I'm not going to pay attention to that. And then later on, I was thinking about it and I was like, well, that doesn't make sense because if I'm going to sit here and I'm going to say I am a Christian and I believe everything that the Bible says is true, I can't just cherry pick the parts that I think are true and the parts that I think I should follow and then ignore the parts that I don't want to follow because, again, that's not that's not sincere. That's not how it works. If you're turning your life over to him and you're saying, I'm going to follow him, then you have to abide by everything he says, not just the parts that are easy for you. Ooh. Okay, so that's something that I had to learn. So I think that's kind of how, that just kind of sums up how and why things in my life changed and how things that were once desirable to me no longer are. And I think as I started to get closer to him too, and I'm reading the Bible and I'm, I, I, I learned to not read the Bible to see what I can get out of it. I'm reading the Bible to actually learn about my creator and learn who he is. And as your relationship with him gets closer, your, your will kind of aligns with his will, if that makes sense. So the way you live your life just kind of automatically starts to align with his will. It's like now you're buddies and now you're like, now you're walking together and now it all makes sense. So let's go through a couple of things. I think I have like four things that I wrote down that um, that just are no longer appealing to me anymore. And it's cool, you'll see a theme in all of these that I talk about is that it naturally started to happen where I didn't really wanna do these things anymore. And then later on, as I read more of the Bible, I would find verses that completely summarized why that thing that I used to do is not good for you or was not good for me. I'm speaking over myself, not you. Speaking over myself. Um, and I wrote those verses down too. So it's all going to make sense. I wrote really thorough notes for this video. Okay. I wrote, I went to a coffee shop to work, uh, and answer emails and do stuff. And I planned this podcast there in the coffee shop and I was actually very productive. I was like, that was speed typing. It was cool. Okay. Anyway. So the first thing, and I've talked about this before, um, the biggest thing that I noticed change in me was getting drunk. I, for years, up until recently, up until last, well, last year mostly, and then even this past summer, we'll get into it, but for years, I was in the bars, in the clubs, every Friday, every Saturday, without fail, pretty much, and I was getting drunk, I was get, I would wake up hungover, I would, you know, and I would still sometimes wake up Sunday morning, go to church. I'd be hung over, but I'd be there and I'd be like, look at me. <laughs> God's so proud of me. Look at me making time for the Lord. But I was hung over and I felt horrible and I wasn't living with integrity. I was being a hypocrite. I would go to church and I would put on a show for people. Not proud of it, but that's what I used to do just to give you a little, little vision. The last time I got drunk was this past summer. Uh, at a concert, did not eat enough, <clears throat> excuse me, did not eat enough food, drank a little too much wine, and there are parts of that concert I don't remember. And my anxiety and my like conviction that I felt the next day was so strong that I have not gotten drunk since. I have drank, don't get me wrong, I still like my wine. I still like some white claw by the pool in the summer. I love a whiskey sour. At a wedding, I will be going to the bar to get a cocktail or two. But I think the how and the why when you drink is what is important. And so my desire to be out at a bar with sweaty bodies pressed up against me everywhere until 2 a.m., sleeping in until 1 p.m. the next day, it's just not appealing to me anymore personally. 
And that just happened automatically. It just happened naturally. I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I think I started to outgrow that last year or like the end, the end, the end of 2022 is I, when I really started to grow out of it. And I think that that was one of the first signs that I was outgrowing where I was in life, in the relationship that I was in. That was like the first sign of like, okay, my mind is starting to change. What I want is starting to change. Um, and I noticed that really not a lot of good came out of that nightlife for me when I drank. I, I told you in my testimony video, I fainted in front of my whole church the next morning because I was dehydrated because I was drinking the day before. It was St. Patrick's Day weekend. And I went to church. I was volunteering. So I was up standing on camera on a pedestal in front of the whole church to see. And I blacked out and I fainted. So embarrassing. I drank and I think was also dehydrated and just got really sick and I fainted in a bathroom. Uh, fun fact, maybe you didn't know this about me. My front tooth is fake, 75% fake. I was so dehydrated and so out of it. It was at like 3, 4 in the morning. I got out of bed, felt sick, went to the bathroom. And I was as I was walking into the bathroom, I fainted and I fell face first into a bathtub. So my tooth is fake. These are all things that would not have happened probably had I not it just for me personally things just nothing really good came out of it I was in a relationship where a lot of fights happened when drinking happened because that's when your true feelings and true emotions come out and a lot of fights happened especially towards the end of that relationship due to I'm not going to totally blame it on the alcohol but the alcohol was a big part of it um just you know and I don't want to go into too much detail because you know it's all other people's business that, you know, that I'm thinking of, of instances where good, not a lot of good things happened, but I have done it. I have done the going out. I have done the hangovers. I have done the doing stupid things, losing your balance because you're drunk. And I can honestly say that I am having so much more fun now than I was then. And society tells you that that's what's more fun. I, for me personally, I am proof that that's not the case always. And I'm just going to say it. I think people glorify alcohol and that's where it becomes dangerous. How many times have you heard people say, you know, when they have a bad day, oh, I need a drink. I need two drinks. I need 10 drinks. You know, if they're joking around, I need 10 drinks right now. It's because a lot of people, I'm just going to say it and I can say it because I have done it. A lot of people, even people that I know, in the past, they glorify alcohol and they use it as a crutch to overcompensate for things that they're not even aware of. How many times I've said it where I'm like, oh, I'm going out, I'm hanging out with a group of people that I don't know really well, but once I have a drink or two in me, then I'll feel comfortable. It's overcompensation. And when you glorify it too much, that's when it becomes dangerous. And when you start to rely on it, it becomes dangerous. That's why I always said now going forward, based on everything that I've learned so far, that my next relationship, one of the things I'm looking for is someone who doesn't turn to alcohol when they have a bad day, but will turn to talking it out, praying about it. That's really, I'm so passionate about it now because I've seen how it is when it works the other way and it doesn't work. I tried for years. It doesn't work. And it creates a lot of anxiety in people. I have friends who get anxious when they drink. I have friends who get anxious when they're in those social situations, but they think that that's normal so that they continue to do it. And then they don't understand why they're anxious. I can honestly say that I have, I have been enjoying life so much more this way. I wake up Saturday mornings. I'm ready to go. I wake up 9 a.m. I could work out if I want to. I'm productive. I don't feel like crap. I'm not fainting. This past year, or I'm sorry, this time last year, I went out with coworkers. This is when I was still really not really walking with the Lord like too much. And I went out drinking with them. Drank a lot. The next morning, I woke up. I knew I was hungover, but... I thought I was okay. I go to the bathroom, I'm brushing my teeth, and I fainted in my bathroom by myself. At that point, I kind of knew, I mean, I am prone to fainting also. It's just that the drinking doesn't help. Um, get it from my dad. Thanks, dad. Um, he's a fainter as well. <laughs> um, not that often. I'm okay. 
I don't want to scare you. I'm fine. But it's just like when we get dehydrated, that's usually our body's first resort is to just faint. Um, And so at that point, I knew the signs. So I was like, okay, I'm about to faint. So I tried to sit on the floor because that's what you're supposed to do. And in, I wasn't even fully on the floor yet when I just passed out. And I remember I, I woke up sitting in so pathetic. Like it feels so pathetic to me. I was sitting in the corner of my bathroom with my head against the wall. I had a little like bruise here because I guess my face hit the wall. My butt was bruised. I come to the water's still running. The water, I don't know how long I was out. I don't know. Um, And it was all because I was hungover and because I was dehydrated. And just it was my body telling me, you don't need to be doing this. This is not for you. This is not for you. Maybe some people can handle it better. It's not for you. So I'm at a point now where, yeah, like I said, I like my wine. I like my white claws. I, you know, but I, it's, it's the why I'm drinking it. I drink it because I like this drink. I think it tastes good. I'm not drinking to mask something. I'm not drinking to get drunk. And it's all about knowing your limits. I've known people, none of my close friends, because I'm saying that because I don't want any of my close friends to think I'm talking about you. I'm not. But I've known people who grown people and don't know their limits and can't control themselves and one of my biggest pet peeves is when people act like they can't control how many they have now some people have a problem my grandpa was an alcoholic I get that I'm not talking about that that's something totally different but like I'm at a point where I'm an adult I know my limits I know my body I know that I'm like okay if I have one more then I'm going to be, I'm going to be at a level that I don't want to be. So I'm going to stop. And I've learned how to say, you know what? I don't need another one. Whereas, you know, a while ago, I didn't really know how to say that. So that's just something that has changed within me. And again, it happened automatically. It wasn't like I was like, I'm never going to get drunk again. Obviously the concert this summer proves that that's, that wasn't the case. Um, and I wrote down a scripture because Later on, when I was, you know, reading the word, I saw this verse and I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. It literally says, Proverbs 20, verse 1, those led astray by alcohol cannot be wise. It's Proverbs 20, verse 1. So let me, let me get to it. I want to read it from here. And actually what I read in Proverbs today, I always read a proverb a day. So like today is January 23rd. So I read Proverbs 23. I do that every day. Um... But what did I say? Proverbs 20, verse 1. Okay, ash bet. All done. Wine produces mockers. Alcohol leads to brawls. Those led astray by drink cannot be wise. And I literally, I read that and I was like, that's so true because I have experienced it myself. I was not wise when I was drinking. I was making stupid decisions and I was anxious and I just was not feeling, I was not feeling myself. Because you're not yourself when you're at that level. And I read something today too. I didn't even write this in my notes, but I was reading Proverbs this morning. And I was like, wow, I want to mention this in the podcast. Proverbs 23, it starts in 23, 29. I'm going to read you the whole thing. It says, who has anguish? Who has sorrow? Who is always fighting? Who is always complaining? Who has unnecessary bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? It is the one who spends long hours in the taverns trying out new drinks. Don't gaze at the wine, seeing how red it is, how it sparkles in a cup, how smoothly it goes down. For it ends, for in the end, it bites like a poisonous snake. It stings like a viper. You will see hallucinations. You will say crazy things. You will stagger like a sailor tossed at sea, clinging to a swaying mast. You will say, they hit me, but I didn't even feel it. I didn't even know it when they beat me up. When will I wake up so I can look for another drink? I have seen it. And I'm, I feel like I'm spending a lot of time on this topic, but I'm so passionate about it. I have seen it. People that are just, that that just, it consumes their life. There's oh, They're always in the bar. They're always like, I need a drink in my hand. It's Friday night. I need a drink in my hand. And it doesn't lead to anything good. It doesn't lead to anything good. Um, so I'm just, I'm so passionate about it because I, 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 I see people all the time that like, like that, like that verse that I just read says like society paints it as it's such a beautiful glorified thing to like go out and get drunk and and do all these things. But in the end, it's gonna, it bites you. And I have seen it. It has taken a physical toll on my body multiple times. 
and it's just not appealing to me anymore. So sorry, I got really passionate. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. But I got really passionate about that because I just, uh, I've just seen it and I've lived it. And I know the effect that it can have on you. Okay, the next thing I stopped is I stopped saying, I manifested this or I am manifesting this. I feel like our society is very like rooted lately in like, do things yourself, be your own peace, be your own hope, which I understand where that's coming from in the sense like the things that I say on this podcast all the time, that it has to start from you. The good things have to start within you. However, when you're saying, or when I re- I realized that when I was saying I'm manifesting this, it was that I was relying on my own power, that I can make these things happen. You're saying, I made it happen myself. And what I think is very interesting, obviously everybody believes different things, right? I'm very open to that. I respect that. You know, I get it. But I just think it's interesting that manifesting is very, very, very similar to prayer. It's just the source of the power is different. But the mentality behind both is the same. You know, when you say you're like, you're, I'm manifesting this, it's like you're speaking it out loud. You're, you're putting it out into the universe so whatever you say is going to happen. It's so similar to prayer and that the Bible says that when you confess something with your tongue and you say it out loud and you say it and you pray it in Jesus' name, it will, it will come to pass. It will happen. It's so similar. It's just the source of what we're looking for is different. So me personally, because of my own personal convictions, I've stopped relying on my own power because... I believe personally that God is placing my steps. He tells, his word says that he will guide me down the best path for my life and that he will point me in the direction and tell me the best road to take. So when I say I'm manifesting this, I'm relying on my own power and you're essentially saying, I keep saying you, I essentially was saying that I was willing to step out of his will because I was relying on my own power, not his. But I do think it's so interesting how similar, like everyone is looking for the same thing. We're all looking for the same thing. We're all craving the same thing. We're just going about it in different ways, which I think is really interesting. But I personally, I didn't want to leave God out of it. I want to involve God in everything I do, every decision I make with a job, every decision I make with, I don't know, where I'm going to live. Like I'm just thinking random things, that decisions that we have to make throughout our life. I want God involved in all of it. So if I say I'm manifesting it, I don't want it to just be coming from myself because I want what I do to be in alignment with his will. And so uh, I wrote down one scripture that, again, I read later, I came across and I was like, that makes sense. That's why my mentality changed. James 1.17, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the father of heavenly lights who does not change, change like shifting shadows. So I want every good and perfect gift to be from God, not from myself. And I want, when I pray for something and it comes to pass, I want it to be for his glory, not for mine. So that's another thing. A big one. This one actually started a lot earlier, maybe even before the alcohol one, actually. Gossiping. I don't know about you guys. I have seen that gossiping, like, in the workplace as an adult is almost like worse than high school. (laughs) Like adults are no better. And it's so easy to get sucked into gossiping with people because it kind of feels good. Or like, you know, you say something funny about someone and then you get a laugh out of everybody else and it makes you feel good, right? It gives you, it gives you a rush and you're like, my flesh craves it. My flesh craves it. It, That's very, that was very appealing for me. Even now, sometimes I struggle with it. And I have to really check myself and I ask God to check me all the time that if I'm going to say something that is not favorable about somebody who is not present, shut my mouth. Don't say it because I, I have slipped into that many times. And as I started growing my walk with God, it really just, it didn't sit right in here. I was like, mm, this doesn't feel good. When I just said that about so-and-so, it didn't feel good. Because I would think the person that I'm talking about, whether they know God or not, God loves them very much. That's a child of God too. So how am I, why am I going to disrespect 
somebody that God loves so much. I know how much he loves me and how much he loves me, he loves them just the same. So I don't want to disrespect him like that. So even to this day, I, I prayed about it this morning. I pray about it every day. I don't want to slip into that, but it's very easy to. So I have to constantly check myself. Um, so I have two, two verses here that kind of sum up kind of, I guess, my mentality of how it changed. Proverbs 20, 19, a lot of Proverbs in here. Proverbs is, I recommend that book so much. It's the book of wisdom. It tells you how, how to live your life in a pleasing way. So Proverbs 20, 19, he who goes about as a slanderer reveals secrets, therefore do not associate with a gossip. So I would think about, am I a gossip? So God would tell people not to associate with me then. Right? Imagine that. Imagine God was like, you know, see that girl Sam right there? No, don't go, don't go talk to her. Humiliating. I don't want that. Proverbs eleven thirteen. a gossip goes around telling many secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. And I was like, okay, I want to be trustworthy. I want to have, again, integrity. I want to be the same person when you're here watching me than when you're not. I think the way somebody acts in your presence as well as your absence tells you all you need to know about a person. Are they the same when you're there and when you're not? And just a side note too, always be cautious about the people in your life that come to you and tell you other people's secrets. Because when I start to see that, when someone so-and-so comes and tells me about Mary, I don't even know a Mary. Oh yeah, I do, but I'm not talking about that Mary. I just used it as an example. If they come and tell me Mary's secrets, I know that if I tell this person my secrets, they're going to go tell other people. So just be very cautious about who you tell what and pay attention to the way people act when other certain people aren't there because that'll tell you everything you need to know. So I don't want to be seen as one of those people. I want to be seen as trustworthy. I want to be seen as... Again, I've said it a couple times already in this video. I want to be seen as somebody with integrity. So gossiping was a big one. And then on that similar note, this is like a branch and I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I think I've talked about it before a little bit, but I have made it my mission to stop ghosting guys. I don't want to ghost people anymore because I have been ghosted and I have ghosted others, but I have been ghosted. It's not a good feeling. It sucks. You know, it's, it's things where you're like, you're not heartbroken, but you're like, well, it depends on the situation. But in, in my experience, I haven't been heartbroken by it, but it definitely stings a little bit. And of course the natural feeling is to think, what did I do wrong? Or what, what was it about me that they didn't like, you know, like is something wrong with me, you know? Um, so I don't want to make people feel like that because again, on a similar note to like the gossiping thing, the guy that I'm talking to or was talking to that I don't want to talk to anymore is a child of God, whether he knows it or not. And I don't want to disrespect God's child like that. You know, and it also goes back to the do unto others as you would have, what is it? What are the words? <laughs> I don't know why words are not coming to me. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. There you go. Um, and Proverbs eleven seventeen says, your kindness will reward you, but your cruelty will destroy you. So I just want to be kind. I just want to be kind to everybody. And I remember the first time I like really did it, there was a guy who was, he was nice, took me out on a date and I just wasn't feeling it. And I think he was and asked if he could take me out on the date. And my instinct was to just run. And I had people tell me, you don't owe him anything. It was only one day, you know, you don't have to answer. And I was like, no, it just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel right. So I just sent him a nice thing. You know, I personally just don't see us as a good fit, but I wish you all the best. You know, I don't want to waste your time. I really hope you find what you're looking for. Smiley face. And he responded and he said, wow, I actually really appreciate that. Like, thank you. I was like, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, I just want to be kind to people. So that was a big thing that I changed to. And the last one, this was a big one. I don't think I've talked about it too, too much. Maybe on my other channel I did, but I have really wanted to not curse anymore not use foul language anymore. Um, there's a verse, I didn't, I wrote, this, I wrote another verse down, but there's another verse. It says, I don't know where it is in the Bible, but it, it basically just says like, no foul language should pass your lips. And I never, I always remembered that. And I was a big, like I had a potty mouth, you know, or like texting my friends or like, you know, I had a potty mouth and little by little, I was, it just didn't feel right. And I was like, no, you know, and I find little way, like little alternative 
curse words or they're not curse words, but it still like gets my aggression out, you know? Um, but yeah, that just is another thing that really just didn't, didn't feel right to me anymore. And that might sound so stupid, like Sam, you're an adult, you know, who cares? And I get it. Because I know how good it feels, especially if you like stub your toe and you just let out a, you know, it just feels good. It like makes you feel good. But I learned that I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, I literally wrote down for no other reason other than it felt wrong. And I wrote down, it surprisingly wasn't as hard as I expected it to be. And I still slip up every once in a while. I'm not perfect. Something goes wrong. The other day I dropped, I was getting ready to leave for work. I dropped my Tupperware of lunch and my food went all over the floor. And you best believe colorful language came out of my mouth. (laughs) I'm not perfect. It still slips up. But it really wasn't as hard as I expected it to be. And I just asked God to help me, you know. The verse I did write down was Colossians 3.8. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Okay, actually, maybe that was the verse I was talking about. Regardless. Um, And so I learned in all these things, not even just the cursing, but all these things, the drinking, the manifesting, the gossiping, the, the ghosting, all these things. What I learned as I started learning more about the Bible and something called the fruits of the Spirit I learned that as I was getting closer to God, I was aligning myself with his will and his intentions for me. And I was developing the fruits of the spirit and the fruits of the spirit are peace, love, joy, faithfulness, self-control, gentleness, long suffering, and kindness. And those are the qualities that God wants every person to have. And so I found that it was just naturally happening to me, which is so cool. I think it's so cool. It like blows my mind how God can shape you and mold you. And he changed my heart. He changed my mind. He changed my vocabulary, my desires. And I wasn't even fully aware that it was happening while it was happening. And then you get to the point where like I am now and I look back and I'm like, oh, it all makes sense. He was working the whole time, even if I didn't feel it. And so that's what I, when I say that I didn't plan it, it just happened automatically. That's, that's what I mean. So I think it's really cool. So I'll leave you with the question and you don't have to answer. You can answer it in the comments if you want. But if you have been on a similar journey to me or as me, how have you felt yourself change, if at all? Maybe you haven't. Maybe what I went through, not everybody went, not everybody goes through. I don't know. But I'm just curious. How have you guys felt God change you? Um because he really works when even when we don't realize it which I think is really really cool so I feel like I talked a mile a minute for the past I don't even know 45 minutes however long that was but I think this was a really good conversation I was so excited to film this episode um as always please let me know what else you guys want to hear and and talk about like I said like I'm making these videos at you but I really want this to just be like a discussion so I would love to hear how you guys you know have seen these differences in your life and I'd love to know what else you want to talk about so um with that being said thank you so much for being here I pray that God shines his light upon you and shows his face to you and and touches you in whatever way that you need And I will be right back here soon for another episode. I think I might have a vlog for you in between this episode and the next one. No promises though, but I think that might be a thing that's going to happen. So we'll see. But um, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here and I will see you next time. Bye guys.